hello guys today we're going to continue to make more of these collectibles around our player but first thing we're going to create some prefabs now uh, before making this tutorial I already cleaned up this folder right here because it was all all of these files were in here free and I put the sparse in one folder the script in one folder and the animations in one folder I'm going to also create a, a folder called prefabs prefabs and add our Indian to that folder just grab it into the prefabs and it's done okay I think that's it now to, we're going to create more of these jewels around the map the started with the map but we're not creating it uh, like one by one for example I've got this jewel here now I could get another jewel from here and putting it here and having to edit all that stuff again and put it again instead we're going to make a jewel in a different way I'm going to show you that right now instead of using this we're going to use this this I don't know what it's called let's call it a method called resources.loadAll and what this does is our code accesses this this folder that we're going to create right now called resources and loads all of the we're going to load all, all of the sprites in that folder with a certain name let's get to it create that folder resources and drag the jewels and you can also drag the tiles for example yes oh wait this resources folder is on the sprites folder drag it into the assets folder so it's now in the assets folder and now that we have our these sprites over here we're going to create a, a script you can add it to this uh, game object that we already have here add components new script sprite Spritz. just because I want to open that new script okay in order to develop we're going to let me show you basically what we want to do is to first off define a variable called sprites in the to make it public in the in here now let me just program you'll catch up so a variable here public sprites sprites and we're going to make it an array an array if you don't know it's like a several sprites in this case an array of ints will be several ints the ones that you want and now using that resources mode resources code copy this I'll, I'll type it anyway because it's a bit different uh, you would type sprites equals resources dot load all sprites And search for um, the string name that you that we are going to put here is is this one jewels. Actually, that could be what we're going to do, but it's not because we're going to do something different. We're going to make it that string accessible in the inspector. So public string say sprite name. Okay, and here, right here, sprite name, sprite name, name. Okay, we can do this line over here because it serves no purpose. And now, 
with this done now we have to access this component and change this field over here so to do it all we have to do is to type get component and the name of the component is sprite render sprite render I think you need to put some parentheses here dot and we want the sprite the field so if basically what we are doing is going into the inspector and checking this this component over here and find searching for this sprite over here or this parameter and change it so this equals now if you if you remember the sprite is an array of of um, of sprites and by making it for example sprites one actually we're changing we're not going to put here one we're going to put again a public value variable called current sprite or just current current sprite and put it on here, curve sprite, sprite, and a semicolon. Oh, of course, semicolon over there. And now let's jump to Unity so that I can show you what are we doing. Now, this field over here wants the, the name of this one of these sprites on the resources folder. So we want the jewel, so we just copy this name or simply type it. I'm just too lazy. And now we have the the path done. And now this current sprite number over here is the number of one of these jewels. So if you don't know the arrays are set from zero to infinity, so this is zero, one, two, three. So right now it's that number was zero. If we hit play, it should stay red. Okay. But for example, if this number is two, then zero, one, two, it should be orange. Let's see if it's orange. It is orange. And I think you'll get it right now. If we hit, for example, three, it it goes green. And this is a simple way of making our sprites appear this way. Now that we have this setup, I'm going to also show you a way to do that to spawn a random gem, a gem that we don't know the color. And of course, you're going to do it in the code. Now, to do that stuff, first off, we're going to check the cur the the cur sprite the number, because if that number is not in the sprite, then we want to actually we're going to make it so that if that number is for example minus one we're going to make it ra random random between the numbers of the sprite so it will be between if it's minus one we're going to make it be between zero and three and then it will spawn a random sprite so if cur sprite equals minus one then curse sprite will be equal to a random range random this is a random function that spawn that makes a random number and there's the int mode and the float mode we're going to use the int mode and basically what the int mode is you select the max the minimum value and the maximum value. The maximum value uh, is not included. So for example if we if we type here five it's only between four zero and four. If we type here seven it's only between zero and six, so on so on. So for example if we type here sprite sprite dot length if you remember this the sprites were four. 1, 2, 3, 4, then this number will be free, will be between 0 and 3. 
so that's done now let's just let me just show you if this is working correctly we're going to spawn us a couple more jewels all over the place and make this one two this one three this one one and this one this will be the random one we're going to set it to minus one It's play, and as you can see, this was zero. Uh, this one was two, zero one two. This one was three, zero one two three, and this was one zero one. And the one that this one is the random. For example, right now you pick two. If we play again, hopefully it will be not orange again. It was orange again. Come on. Now it, it's uh, red. Green, as you can see, it changes. Just to show you that this works also for other stuff, we're going to to add one of these tiles into our scene, and add the script that we just created, the spread script, and by typing the name that's in the resources, which is tile is two, and by typing a current sprite like. Four, four not not four. Four doesn't exist. Three. If we play, that sprite changes to this sprite, just like the jewels change. That's that script can also be added to other sprites to make more stuff. Okay, now that I've shown this to you, I think we're done for we're done for today. What I'm going to do is add this. First name it's a different a different thing, name it gem and drag it to the prefab so that we can later on use it easily and now we have that done for today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial.